Hello. So if I sound a little lethargic, I have been awake all night, so please excuse that. Um, before I get into the main points of this video, uh, just a little observation from from the news the other day. Um, the main news was, of course, on the Reading terrorist attack, and that's understandable. The same day, actually, three children died at a house fire in Paisley. Um, and I just think that's interesting how um, an accident, a tragic accident, is always going to get less attention than a deliberate human act. So maybe that says something about human psychology. Um, there have actually been some um, assertions that because this attack may have been motivated by racism or homophobia, that it's been overlooked. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think it's getting a fair amount of attention as it should. Right, uh, the main point of the video, I want to... One more point of observation, actually, and it's, it's connected to the things I'm going to talk about. That um, professor at Cambridge University, and of course she's trying to excuse her comments, claiming they were taken out of context. It's a very weak attempt, actually, if you look at her retort. Um, she's not saying she wasn't intending to talk about white people. Um, she's saying that she was referring to structural racism. Um, this is Professor Gopal um, of Cambridge University. In the previous video, I said uh, I wasn't entirely sure of her background. Well, she was born in Delhi. She's Indian. Um, that's interesting because India has not got a good reputation when it comes to racial attitudes. In fact, it's, I would say, one of the worst countries in the world in terms of reputation. So it's always interesting when Indian nationals um, exhibit racism themselves. Um, they're very often the loudest people to speak out when there's anti-Indian racism. This is something that maybe needs more attention. I remember back in 2009, um, the reality TV star Jade Goody had to go to India to make a groveling apology after her racist rhetoric against uh, fellow Big Brother contestant Jill Pachetti. Now, that's not to condone what Jade Goody said. Uh, she was pretty much an ignorant child the use of vernacular of that time. Um, but, you know, it, it's an indicator of where there are double standards. Now we have an Indian professor who's clearly a lot more educated than Jade Goody, who's made very provocative racial statements and who has been actively defended by Cambridge University by and by white apologists. You know, some people will hold up the fact that white people are defending her to say, oh, well, look, she's not racist. There's white people defending her. Um, they, they're beyond pathetic, in my opinion. Um, useful idiots comes to mind. Right, so uh, to get to the main point of this video, what's been occurring to me in recent days, and it's less... I've actually been looking at a lot of old videos of John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Uh, I'm a big fan of Lennon's music, less so his politics, but certainly his music. And I was always very interested in that whole John Lennon-Yoko Ono dynamic. But don't worry, this is not going to be a video all about that, you know, if you're being put off and you figure it out. That's already well covered. That's not really what I want to talk about. I'm just thinking, um, in the 70s, they were, you know, very much symbolic of that whole revolutionary left-wing movement you know it was revolutionary to be anti the vietnam war um pro pro civil rights and actually it was in the new phase of civil rights at that time when it was all sort of black power and so on um that was very revolutionary and that was the thing uh, at the time you know, they were considered revolutionary people like John Lennon and Yoko Ono and, uh, and others, Malcolm X, of course, and uh, there were other figures of that sort of whole series of movements. It wasn't defined by one movement, but they were seen as revolutionary figures. Now, I actually think that what we are seeing today, uh, the whole notion of wokeness, 
whole notion of um, being politically correct, the whole notion of being progressive, is actually not revolutionary. If anything, that has now almost become the establishment. And this is why. Because it has permeated every avenue of power that we can think of. Consider our university campuses. Consider media institutions. Consider the halls of power. Rather than being um, encountered to the power dynamic, you're actually seeing this in the corridors of power, in media, in politics, and um, in every other walk of life concerning power. Now, some might say that's a ridiculous statement because they're, they're speaking out against white privilege, they're speaking out against the patriarchy and so on. But when you actually look into this, when you consider the amount of virtue signaling that is going on, to me, that is symbolic of the power these people have to, to dictate the narrative. Because what we're seeing in the media, even right-wing tabloids, are to some extent towing the line with this. Look at the coverage of Black Lives Matter over the last month. It's been overwhelmingly um, positive from the media and from politicians. Sure, there's been critics, but they have generally been dismissed as right-wing reactionaries. So you get this narrative from the BBC, from Sky News, from the Conservative Party, from the Labour Party, from the Liberal Democrats, not that they're particularly significant today, but uh, you get it from celebrities. The narrative is entirely, we must endorse Black Lives Matter, otherwise we'll be seen as racist will be seen as exhibiting white privilege. And an example of this is the backlash that Dominic Raab received when he said he wouldn't take the knee. He was immediately denounced. So when I said we're seeing something akin to a cultural revolution, I think we are, but it's not, it's not so much revolutionary in the sense that um, it's really radical and new. This has been going on for some time. It's just that this, June 2020 is going to be seen as like the, the long hot summer of, you know, racial unrest. And I think a large part of it has been cooked up by far left radicals within Black Lives Matter. I'm not saying that everyone who supports the movement is far left. That's not what I'm saying. But I do believe there are definitely, I'll just say it, um, Marxist elements within Black Lives Matter that absolutely want mass civil disobedience, they want mass unrest. They want nothing short of totally overthrowing what they regard as white institutions, as white patriarchal Western society. Consider the following. If you if you believe that uh, someone who's born with male genitalia cannot be considered to be a biological woman in the definition of woman, then you're you're dangerous, you know, because you are transphobic. You are speaking out against the narrative on that. If you criticize Black Lives Matter for their blatant double standards, and if you criticise the double standards that we see on racial issues, such as the attitude um, that's being shown in defence of Professor Gopal, if you criticise those things, then you're going to be pigeonholed as a, as a far-right reactionary. So, actually, thinking outside the box will get you portrayed as a dangerous reactionary, will get you portrayed as some sort of far-right um, white identitarian. I do think that a lot of white people are being pushed into a corner where they don't particularly want to be, you know... I mean, put it this way, I have no interest in being, like, standing up for the white people, you know? I don't, I don't see white people as my people. 
okay? There are certain white people I've got no time for, both on the far left and on the far right. I've no time for white nationalists. They don't represent me, and I've no interest in representing them. But what we've seen over the past month has been, I think it's it's symbolic of a deeper issue, but definitely escalated over the last month. And I'm adamant that it has done nothing but bring us back. It hasn't done a damn thing to build bridges or build up communication. I'm not even sure it's brought about a lot of debate. It's just brought about a lot of resentment and anger. There are fundamental issues that need to be um, taken seriously, like uh, the Windrush generation and um, the injustices they faced. But I believe the government is well aware of that. And I think that has been extensively debated and looked at. And um, I'm not going to say it's been entirely addressed. But there's a lot of distortion and conflation going on. So, for example, um, the move to deport foreign nationals to commit criminal offences was being conflated with the injustice of faced by the Windrush generation. That is to say, the people who were, um, you know, now in their 60s and 70s and older, um, who were told after generations that they were that they still hadn't had British citizenship. I think those people were treated very badly, no question about it. But conflating that with, say, a 25-year-old who has numerous drug offences or could be a rapist or a gang member and is going to be deported back to Jamaica or Trinidad, it's, it's just manipulative to conflate the two things. Um, one big concern I've got with what's happening now is I think the police are actually reluctant to intervene in serious cases of unrest. I mean, why is it the riot in Brixton, and let's face it, that's what it was, 15 officers were wounded, breaking up this illegal rave. Why is it the sort of attitude that was taken to that was markedly different from the attitude taken to the White Lives Matter banner? You know, you would think that that was a crime of the century. They were talking about getting uh, the Crime Prosecution Service involved and uh, using up two police uh, services, Greater Manchester Police and Lancashire Police, um, in terms of dealing with it. Um, and I've just spelled something, so... Um, yeah, so using up two, I'll try and I don't want to reload this video. Um, spelt my tea, shit. Ah, maybe that's metaphorical for the, the mess that is going on in our society right now. It's quite a sturdy book, I think. Dang. So, yeah, um, I really don't want to upload this video again. Um, I just think that a lot of reasonable people, a lot of open-minded people who really, really do oppose all racism and all bigotry and really do try to be consistent, finding themselves, if they're being um, honest about what they're observing, they find that they're taking a risk. I mean, the things that I've said, I would certainly be portrayed by um, woke people as um, as an alt right guy. And I'm really not. You know, I could tell them I voted Remain. I'm very critical of President Trump. And I robustly condemned the white nationalists who rioted in London. But they have a certain narrative. And if you dare think outside the box, You know, you're dangerous. They, they see you as, um, as a threat. Because you're not endorsing the group think that is going on here. And I, I must admit, I'm pretty concerned with the trajectory of this.
because I think that um, things that we value in Western society, like freedom of expression, I do think they're gravely under threat with what's going on here. When we see certain kinds of freedom of expression criminalised and penalised, and other kinds given a free light, even though both particular opinions could be provocative and controversial. So, for example, Dr. Gopal's opinions, her tweets, were very inflammatory, very insulting to many, many people. She keeps her job. She's defended by the institution that employs her and a lot of useful idiots. Now, uh, you get someone like Jordan Pearson, who is totally denounced as a dangerous uh, character, who's deplatformed, you know. Um, And we can see this in many different uh, so-called progressive campaigns. Um, third wave feminists also display it. Um, I think the Me Too campaign went too far. I think it got to the point of its initial issues were all very valid, very valid. But started getting to the point of conflating a serious sexual assault and rape with, um, with so-called everyday sexism and uh, mutually innocent situations and i do be believe it became something of a witch hunt um but the sad thing here is that a lot of centrists and center-left people are finding themselves actually pushed towards the right and they don't particularly want that because there'll still be a lot of areas on the right they really dislike but they're finding themselves pushed that way because of the sheer, sheer intolerance of the woke mob. If you're one of those people that is talking about cancelling views that you dislike, if you're one of those people that is trying to censor and smear and um, basically destroy any public figure who dares to have an opinion that you don't like, Someone like J.K. Rowling, for example. Even though she has never advocated hate against trans people, she's never advocated violence. And I do not accept that she has dehumanised anyone. I don't think that's what she's done. She sarcastically replied to the ridiculous notion that um, anyone other than biological women can menstruate. Uh, that's just a fact. We are in a bizarre situation here. We're stating facts. Stating plain facts is now considered a revolutionary act. I mean, not considered revolutionary by the woke brigade. They think they're revolutionary. I think they're actually pretty, they're becoming mainstream. I think it's actually far braver and far more revolutionary to speak out against these people and to speak out against their dishonest narrative and to actually be consistent. That's revolutionary today. And I, um, I'm just going to say what I think is right and what I think is the truth. Because it has to be defended. Common sense has to be defended. Otherwise, I think we'll go into the abyss. And that hasn't happened yet. You know, I don't want to use hyperbole. You know, I'm making these videos freely. So far, and often happening. But who knows, in the future, YouTube may completely remove videos like this. Never mind the monetizing problem. They might completely remove them. So, I think that's the situation we're in. And uh, anyone who's paying attention needs to be very, very concerned about what's going on here. Because there is extreme intolerance out there and it's manifesting itself certainly in the far left and far right but it's also manifesting itself by so-called progressives who are actually nothing of the sort 